probably paint a blue underneath. Oh, that looked like it hurt. We hope working on understanding of these magnificent animals and all that they represent. <laughs> that was like a belly flop. Oh, aha. <laughs> oh, there's two of them! While they are found in every ocean, orcas living off the coast of Iceland are quite different than those near Costa Rica. Give it the water, it was like still. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, social structure and habitat Wow as you can see the differences are subtle but noticeable when compared side by side how did they even get these things out of the ocean orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments and even the whales black and white coloration has a purpose it camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey regulates their body temperature. There is no bone or muscle in that fin, so sometimes you'll see it curve. The flippers on either side of the whale are called pectoral flippers, and these help with steering and stopping. If you were to take an x-ray of those pectoral flippers, you'd see five bony digits, just like in our hands. Ooh. And finally, the lobes on either side of their tail are called flukes. Now, this is the killer whale's engine, propelling them to top speeds of 30 miles an hour, wow. which is as fast as some speedboats. However, killer whales swim the fastest, and they use the most power when they're propelling their nearly 10,000 pound bodies all the way up and out of the water. Communication. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orcapod is always led by a female. 
Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. Look under the thing. There's tons of them. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. Whistles to socialize in the pond. And calls for group coordination and hunting. Development studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. He's got a shiny bald head. Whales here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales use body language to communicate with each other. A pectoral slap may be used to show dominance or to get noticed. For example, a mother may use a peck slap to get her calf's attention. <laughs> But when they really want to be heard, they breach. That's impressive that that glass is holding together. Spy hopping is how killer whales coordinate with one another and get a better sense of their surroundings while they hunt. <laughs> you do, mustache. Fluke slaps are another form of communication used by both killer whales in the wild and, well, right here at SeaWorld. sit down there. As you can see, killer whales are excellent communicators, so it's no wonder why they're at the top of our ocean's food chain. So much Dang! The orcas' hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle barely, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herding. But the fish confused and contained. The whales stun them with their powerful tail flips. way to show us a similar behavior and movement right here on our slide out. Holy crap, he's huge! And 
Arctic orcas will actually make their own waves to knock unsuspecting seals right off of floating ice. We need a demonstration of that. a similar wave making technique, demonstrating another complex and impressive hunting ability that killer whales have developed oh, wow. all over the world. Oh wow. Oh my, oh my gosh. Wow. I think I just found my new favorite aquatic sea animal. Now you just saw those waves crashing right here in front of all of you. But you can't imagine the true power or the amount of water that's displaced until you experience it for yourself. Luckily, I have two new friends here who have volunteered to help me show you the power of the waves. Let's give them a big sea world sea. Alrighty, friends, so you guys are going to take a seat right there on that blue box. Perfect. Oh, they're so okay. cool. So today, you guys are going to be my seal. And this is your iceberg. And there's a little handle right there that you might want to grip onto so you don't get washed away. Now, I just have one question for you. Are you ready to get wet? Yeah? Do I think they're ready to get wet, everybody? I think they are. How much do you think they get paid to do this? The blue whale that you see on the screen is the largest animal on Earth. It is nearly five times longer and 50 times heavier than a killer whale. Fatty. So how does a whale the size of Porky take on a whale that size in the wild? Well, it's all possible because killer whales are the ultimate team players. In this example, we see the larger male orca surround a sperm whale forming a perimeter, while the females continue to drag the whale forward until it reaches exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their friends, wow. the killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator. I'm glad I got a statue Play of the orcas. Play is an important part of everyday life for killer whales. It's how young whales learn how to hunt and continue to practice their skills as they grow. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? What? The super high pitched thing. You'll always see killer whales interacting and showing off their place inside, both in the wild and what? right here at SeaWorld. Warpacing is when a killer whale swims really fast at the surface of the water, breaking out just briefly. Holy! Now you can see how much chemicals are in the water. Or even when they're surfing away. Like to be touched and will rub their bellies on rocks in the wild when they can. We see our whales demonstrate similar behaviors, just like the whales would in British Columbia. <laughs> You'll often see killer whales in the wild imitate one another. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales are constantly mimicking and learning from each other. You are my 
Oh my god, the big one's doing it too. <laughs> For example, a tail whip may be used in hunting to stun prey. However, today, I've got a feeling that you guys just might be stunning all of you. Huh? Oh, they're about to, they're, one's gonna go there, there, and there, and they're gonna make a huge splash. I have a good feeling. That one's getting ready to just choo. Yep, there it goes. Holy! <laughs> the guy was trying to sit down. All day, every day here at SeaWorld. It allows us to build trusted relationships so that we can provide optimal health care, research, and quality of life. In fact, all eight of our killer whales here at SeaWorld San Diego take an active role in participating in their own health care. We train a variety of husbands for example, asking them to present us with their tail flutes is helpful when we need to obtain a voluntary blood sample to monitor their overall health. Copy that. <laughs> Our wheels will even slide up onto a scale so we can monitor their weight, just like you see Orca doing in the video on the screen. We're even able to obtain breast samples from their blowholes to monitor their respiratory health. All because of the relationships that we build every day here at SeaWorld. And now I would like to take this time to introduce you all to a very special whale. Everybody, please put your hands together for Miss Shuka. Now Shuka originally came to us from a facility in Northern California where she lived with a pod of bottlenose dolphins. So that was her vocalization that you heard earlier in the presentation. She was even able to teach that vocalization to some of our younger whales here. Do you, do you hear that high pitch? We challenge our whales like Shuka every day to learn new things, to engage and stimulate their minds. Diet, exercise, and of course play. I'll keep these whales in great shape. Whales here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. Other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective these whales are to understand naughty. how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation. <laughs>
Now please enjoy the rest of your day here at SeaWorld. Bye-bye, everybody.